Hey, what is happening everyone? Welcome back to another video. And today we're checking out BenQ's $200 e-reading lab. So without further ado, let's just get right into it. So a couple years ago, we had taken a look at BenQ's screen bar, which is an LED light bar that sits on top of your monitor that lights your desk setup very, very nicely. You can set your brightness and color temperature or have it automatically set that for you according to your environment. And since then, I've been using it for a couple years now on pretty much weekly basis, whether I'm doing some reading, writing, or really mainly some DIY work when I want to take things apart and get some work done on my computer setup, even though I have a dedicated work setup right behind me. Now fast forward a year or two and BenQ came out with their screen bar light and that essentially was just a portable version of the original screen bar which is really nice because it came in a box that was portable and you can take that work light wherever you are in the world and get some real work done that way. Which brings us to BenQ's granddaddy of lights, the e-reading lamp. This time it's bigger, better, flexible and it's all packaged in a very nice sleek looking design. So let's take a look at it and see what it's all about. So yeah, you heard that right and you have read the title, it is a $200 lamp. But with that said, don't let that name mislead you. This thing is very versatile, it's sleek looking and it's got a really nice curved LED bar that solves one main issue that regular lamps do, which is having one single point of light. Now what really makes it stand out is not only the bar but it's also its flexibility and it allows you to actually use this thing in various different applications. And depending on what kind of things you do on your desk, this thing might be totally worth getting. But first, let's take it all in. The unboxing experience from BenQ has always been pretty straightforward. In the box, you'll get the heavy weighted base, the light stand combo, and the power adapter. That is nicely designed to allow for some easy cable management. Now according to the website, it is made from a combination of aluminum alloys, zinc alloys, and some quote unquote engineering resin, which really means plastic. That said, it doesn't really specify which parts are which, so we're going to find out in just a bit. Now putting it all together, it feels nice and solid and it barely wobbles when shaken. The non-detachable cable here has plenty of lengths for most setups. And as you can see here, it is a nice thick nylon braided cable. And if you really want it, you can easily rearrange the cable here and play around with how much slack you want on each joint. Now moving on to the base, it's weighted using four aluminum discs, totaling at around 3.2 kilograms. Knowing that the base is made out of aluminum, we can assume that the main structure is the one that is made up of the zinc alloy. Taking a look at the top, we have two main controls. One of them is the visible dial and the other one happens to be that chrome looking ring. That my friends is your power button and yes, it is touch sensitive. With a simple tap, you can turn it on and off. To change your brightness, you simply turn the dial. And to adjust your color temperature, you simply click the dial and then start turning it once again to change your color temperature. As for the automatic ambient mode, you simply hold down the power button until it starts flashing, which then it will adjust according to your environment. But honestly, it doesn't work all that well and sometimes it's a bit too dim. Which then I recommend sticking around with the manual controls because they're flawless and they work perfectly and in most cases you're just going to set it and forget it. Alright, so at this point let's actually go ahead and do some real life testing. In this test we have the BenQ Lite against a cheap alternative made up of a standard IKEA stand as well as a cheap 1200 lumen Amazon bulb. In comparison the BenQ is about 900 lumens by the way. Both of them are set to the maximum brightness. The bulb of course is always on max brightness. There's no adjustability for that and there's no adjustability for the color temperature as well. Well, the BenQ of course has both of those. So let the testing begin and see what the real differences are between them. All right, so right now we have the BenQ light with a daylight color and the maximum brightness. And this should give you an idea of what things would look like. The main thing about this BenQ light that I really love or about all the BenQ lights really is that the light is always diffused. It's very nice and calm and the shadows directly under it are usually very soft. But anyways, back at the first test, here's a quick side-by-side -side comparison between the BenQ on the left and the cheap alternative on the right, with a bunch of random objects on the table to see what the shadows look like compared between each other. And yes, I'm going to try to make sure that the lights are perfectly centered on top of the camera lens over there. So here is the full screen one for the lamp, and as you can see, things look pretty okay. I mean, it's a lamp, it's a cheap one, and it works. There's honestly nothing really wrong with it. And that being said, here is the BenQ light, and as you can see, the shadows here are much more softer. They are very clean, and the light honestly is just a whole lot more calming. And to give you a full idea of the versatility of the light in terms of brightness and color temperature, here is a quick example. Starting off with the color temperature, and now brightness. So yeah, as you can see, the light here is just a whole lot more softer compared to the lamp. So the conclusion, what have you learned? Should you get this thing? Is it worth your money? And who is it for? Well, honestly, at the end of the day, it's just a sleek looking lamp that looks nice and it functions pretty nicely. It is a functional, cool looking piece of furniture that allows you to change the color temperature and the brightness on the fly with ease. But should you spend $200 on it? Is this for you? You gotta put it into context. Because if you actually go ahead and compare this lamp to some designer lamps out there, that's not bad. Because whenever you hear designer, that means something is gonna be super expensive. Because someone designed a really cool piece of furniture and they're gonna jack the price up a whole lot. Meanwhile, BenQ's lamp here is actually made for function first. Because if you guys remember, the idea originated from the screen bar itself. And then later on, they decided to make a proper desk lamp with the same simple great idea. This time with a bit more flexibility. And overall, it is just a simple, elegant looking lamp that produces some nice soft diffuse light. And with that being said, I could totally recommend it if you can actually afford it and if you really like the design of this lamp. 
And if you do end up getting it, I don't think you'll be regretting it at all. Because once you put this lamp on your desk, that desk will become a super productivity desk. Whether you're on your computer doing some reading or doing some writing, you're going to have a great time. And especially if you're like me, taking things apart is going to be really, really fun. And with all that being said, guys, that is all for this video. So thank you all for watching and thanks to make you for sending this out for a review. As always, my reviews are all honest and based on my own experience. And if you do have any specific questions, then do let me know in the comment section below. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everyone.